did the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. That could be a bit big for the carp that I was supposed to be catching in this episode. Could use its bait, I suppose, for tiger sharks. Nah, carp's too small. Anyway, I digress. Sometimes when you go fishing and you're dedicated for one species, you can get a little bit sidetracked, can't you? You can miss out on some other good stuff. And I got this illustrated to me when I was fishing with Mike over at a place called Berry Hill Fisheries in Dorking. It's a still water, just a regular water, good what they call an estate lake. And we were going on an overnight carp trip, which I don't do very often at my age. I've done lots when I was younger, not when I'm older. But it's a fun place to go. We like fishing there. It's just a general good fishy feeling about the place. But sometimes the carp don't play ball during the daytime when it's flat calm. Now, walking around the lake, I noticed an awful lot of carp anglers asleep in their bivvies in the daytime. Well, if you've been up all night with carp, I can sort of understand it, but if you've not had any carp at all, you've had plenty of sleep, you're sort of wasting your time in the water. If the carp aren't feeding, what else could you go for? I got to thinking about it. Do you know what I used to do this years ago? Fish a carp all night, and when the carp shut down, go for something else. Even using carp gear. Whoa, that's something different. This could be a way that you guys out there could catch at least a few fish and save the dreaded blank. Let's get down the lake. Majority of anglers there that particular night were there for the carp. They were all set up in their bivvies. It's a beautiful still evening. Sometimes, however, at Old Berry Hill Lake, the main lake there, can fish better, they say, for carp when it's windy. Southwest is the wind, apparently, a nice warm wind, but uh, Aaron's casting out here. He's getting his bait straight in the water. Mike's catapulting out the bait, ready for a carp session. That's all they were after carp. They were gonna sit it out in the swim for carp. Firing out. The boilies as close to those trees on the other side as they could. But listen guys, here is the thing, look at these seagulls, how clever they are. They can actually see, zoom, see them go down there? If you watch it, this is guys casting their bait, uh, not casting their bait, sorry, catapulting their bait out. Now watch the birds, they're zooming back, bosh, down they drop, and they eat nearly every single boilie that this poor angler is catapulting out there. Now you'd think he'd be watching this, the action of the birds and realise he's basically putting about 15 pounds of the bait straight down the pan really because they're not sinking to the bottom. So be aware when the birds are around, try not to catapult when the seagulls are diving like this. They're going to eat every single boilie that hits the surface. Total waste. Most guys actually do it when it's getting dark or what I do, I, I catapult a few away say to the right or the left and then catapult your main bait when there's only, say, one bird where Mike's casting now. It was an absolutely idyllic evening. There was no question of that. This is a traditional estate lake, and look at it, beautiful there. Would the carp come on the feed? Well, these anglers have been out all day and were just on the way back in. I have no idea what they've been fishing for. They might have been fishing for uh, bream, or they could have been fishing for the carp um, down in the shallows. I think they call it an area called the jungle area at uh, Berry Hill. Anyway, the thing is, my shelter is not a bivvy. It's a beach shelter, an umbrella, a deck chair, and a bed chair. This is the Graham Pullen bivvy setup. A plastic aluminium deck chair. There you can see it. However, I've been out in the wilds enough to know this is definitely going to keep me nice and warm and dry through the night. And would I get woken up by a carp? Uh... Actually, I've got a full night's sleep. Oh, there you go, people. It's about five o'clock in the morning. We've had finicky bites throughout the night. Um, and I, this was a real finicky bite from this fish. But um, thankfully, he stayed on the hook. This is on a single boilie. Um, there's a guy over near the boathouse. He's had definitely most of the fish throughout the night. But uh, we'll get this one back. Um, it's a nice looking fish. We'll get him back. Yeah, so I had a few beeps and that through the night and not had anything to strike on and then this morning got the bream on the snowman rig greedy bugger <laughs> yeah glad to get one the carp have been elusive so far yeah, yeah <laughs> a few yeah. splashing out isn't there yeah yeah but we only had the one haven't we yeah so far 
Well, it sounded like Mike was a bit croaky from a sleepless night listening to the beeps of the bream. But that got me into fishing for the bream. I thought, why shouldn't I double up with my carp gear, put a hook link on and try and catch some bream? There's another totally awesome tip for this type of fishing. I've got some raptor oil. It's not actually mayonnaise. You wouldn't want this on your sandwiches. Get some oil and with these pellets, just scatter some. I just want to show you what they look like. These are the two mil pellets. So you've got your pellets just like this and I'm going to put some oil on there very, very lightly. This is the, own, the oil I make myself. It's just a little bit like that. Just almost, I want to call it a dusting. It's like a cookery program. Mix it all in. Let that soak up. You're letting those pellets basically soak up the oil. I'm still going to hopefully put them in dry. Now you'll see them soaking out. I can take a few more actually. It's like a cookery program. You'll be impressed with this. You can use various oils, a tackle trade or send you, send you loads of oils. This is, as I say, I only make my own called Raptor Oil. Don't sell it, just make it, fish with it. Use it for everything, sea fishing, freshwater fishing. But it does seem to work really well with these pellets. I would say give that 10 or 15 minutes. Strike that fish as well. Give that 10 or 15 minutes. Oh my God, I've got bites on both of them. Just like this. And then, probably by the time I catch that next bream, I'll put this in the water and you'll see what it does to the surface. And it sends a fish crackers. Okay, now this gives you an idea. There is, if you can see that there, that's the color of a standard two mil pellet. And that's been soaking for about 15 minutes. You can see the difference, how it's gone much, much darker and it's soaked up that oil content. And that's really good for this type of fishing. Feeder, round the lead like I've been using it, or just general loose feed. See what it looks like in the water. Okay, this is a standard pellet. As you can see, it's sinking down there. Leaves nothing, no residue on the surface. That's a standard pellet. So we let that surface clear. And just look what it looks like when I throw my Raptor oil covered in. OMG. That is something totally different. Absolutely. Look at the oil coming off it. And that's every little particle here is being carried right down to the fish to pop up and attract them off the surface from the bottom. And there's a bite there now, and that's on raptor soaked oil. Right there, you can, hopefully you can see it. It does work and you can see it more out deeper. If I throw some out there, use this up if you just watch the surface out there you should see in that ripple that it absolutely slicks the entire surface off there now can you see that hopefully if I if I just pull back with that camera you can see see the ripples now that came all the way to this fishing staging if I just pull back on the zoom Look at the entire smooth area that I created, and here comes Mr. Duck. I assure you, he can smell it. He doesn't know what's on that surface. Look at his face. Well, his face is a duck, for God's sake. Do they have faces? Anyway, you can see he is very interested in what's going on here. That surface slick is still dissipating, and it's now gone out 25 yards, and I haven't cast that far. Let's put some onto my little nugget of ground bait. Two mil pellets soaked in raptor oil and just see if we can't pick a fish or two off with it. Now here's the tip guys. I've got my pellets, I've moulded them actually right around the lead. It's a running lead so it can still slide up and down the line. And as you can see there, you'll see it sliding up and down the line. And I'm not casting far for these bream. I'm just going to go out in front of that willow with an underhand cast plop in it goes I'm just gonna now I'm gonna twitch the line here look shaking the line if you can shake the line like this that can actually sink it quicker on a still day when there's no ripple to sink the line on a windy day it doesn't matter so much it get you know the uh, the wave action actually sinks a line for you then I, ha I haven't got any bait runner reels I can't afford any bait runners so anybody wants to donate two bait runners to me oh, I'll definitely accept them 
I don't use the bait runners, I just have to use whatever reels I've got. But I'm going to be using bobbins there made from, yes, a matchstick and a piece of valve rubber tubing, which I used 40 years ago. Those bobbins are 40 years old, hard to believe. I then just make sure the drag's backed off, as I say, because I haven't got any bait runner reels. Now, don't lose the rod, bit of tension on there, I'm all set. Lightweight bobbins, any bream out there, well, that's all we used all, all the time years ago. Any bream is going to take that up and not feel any resistance. In contrast, the usual carp bobbins, look how heavy they hang on the line. Well, that's fine for a carp that's hooked on a self-hooking bolt rig, but not really going to work too well for the bream. Whereas I just balance these two bobbins up. I keep tightening up, tightening up. Use the reel just there, just make minor adjustments with the reel handle. And I like to get both bobbins hanging next to each other. I just find that's the way that my eye can actually see the bike come better. So I'm all set up there, ready for some bream. And I'm using a, a light hook link. You could use something like say a 12 hook, size 12 hook, three pound hook link like the Matchman use. And it's working for me with that ground bait molded around the lead. I actually started to pick up some bream. It just goes to show you the method can work while you wait for a few carp. You can amuse yourself with bream like this. Okay, you've got to take your time playing them because you're on a light hook link. But like I showed you just now, how you put that ground bait and mould it around the lead itself, old school style, still works. What it certainly seemed to be working for me is this bream came in sideways with the line tangled around his fins. I don't care how they come in, as long as they come in. And there we go, this is how I do it. Just squeeze those two wool pellets together, push the lead into the pellet, and then mold the pellets around the lead, but not over the swivel. So it can still slide up and down. And I've got one shot stopping it go down. That's on the, on the uh, carp line, and I've got a lighter hook link underneath. Now you can do distance casting with this, you can cast it quite a long way, or as I am, I'm just casting out like this, out near the front of that willow, and it certainly seemed to be getting those fish in a feeding mood. It's something I used to do years ago when I was barbel fishing, it's sort of standard practice is to put ground bait around the lead. Now of course you can try different feeders, uh, but obviously a lot of carp guys just go with heavy leads and bolt rigs, they don't bother with feeders, but I know that this lake goes dead in the daytime when it's flat like this, so I just wanted to catch fish at the end of the day. I'd had no carp during the night, but look, hey ho, that's fishing. That's why they call it fishing and not catching. But by using this extra technique here, hey, I'm having some action. All I took with was three pounds worth of maggots with me. Yes, it's slightly overgun gear. Well, okay, okay, it's not slightly, it's very overgun gear. But you can't say it's not working. I'm there in the daytime. Everybody else is asleep in their bivy, doing absolutely nothing. And at least I'm still fishing and catching fish after fish. Now look at the oil on the surface from where I've cast there. You can see that nice polished area where the rapture oil has come up to the surface. So I know exactly where my bait is going to be. And I can concentrate, basically you can get that smell into that one area. It's a tench, right? Huh? Can't feel his It's a tench. I thought he was fighting hard. Yeah. Well, guys, here is the benefit of doing that little method, waiting for the carp. And there's not been one carp caught, as far as I can see in here, on the entire lake. So I'm having a ball here. I've got something different to a bream. I thought this is fighting hard for a bream, and he's still fighting. And I haven't got it yet because I'm on that small hook link. So you've got to add up. Playing it carefully, it's a three pound hook link on a two and a quarter pound, two and a half pound test curve rod. And I think I've got 15 pound line as a main line. So that is where you've got to have a little bit of care. I do not need it going in the snags, but I'd like to see it as a tench. Now, years ago, here at Berry Hill Fisheries, 
<laughs> he's going better than a carp. They used to get a lot of tench, less so now, but it'd be nice to get one just to show you guys. So that's perch, skimmers, bream, and who knows, if I ever get it in, a tench, he's on the surface. Look, it's no monster, but you can tell the difference in the fight between a tench and a bream, big time. Come on, come up, come up, there he is. Oh no, 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 don't go in there. No, 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 no fighting please. Come on, in you come. So watch those light hook links. Guys, there's a really nice tench here. Gave me a super scrap. Just goes to show, you know, if you can just adapt and make a little change and make some for form of terminal rig work for you, you can have some good fishing and I'm still waiting for carp tonight. So I've lost absolutely nothing. With the old raptor oil, didn't you? I'm actually having quite a ball here. I'm just getting used to easing those fish in on those lighter hook links. I'm guessing it's another breed. Now here's another of Graham's totally awesome tips. Just watch the line where it enters the water. You can only do this generally on still days. But look, if I just tweak it, a lot of the bites you're gonna get from fish like bream and tench will twitch the line at the end of the rod top where it enters the water. You won't even get a beep on your bite indicator. So take my advice, watch where that line enters the water and you could hit those extra fish. There you go, only a small green that I've been catching before, but please to catch it. Just goes to show, doing something with that extra rod during the daytime, you could still leave your carp rod out there with a boiler or whatever on it, and you could use your second carp rod as a double up using this method, at least catch something during the day, and hey ho, you've still got the carp during the night. You might get your fishing, well, you should be catching something through the day anyway like this, and you never know, you might come up with a huge bream, huge tench, big perch, who knows what you could catch doing it this way. Enjoy your fishing, thanks for watching the Totally Awesome Fishing Show.